How do you create an intranet with SharePoint Online? We'll go through it in these steps. Let's jump right into my computer so I can show you a, all the steps you need to follow to create an intranet with SharePoint Online. Wait a moment. I'll steal 10 seconds to introduce myself. I am one of the Microsoft most valuable professionals and on this channel you will find tons of technical videos to keep you updated on all Microsoft 365 technologies from SharePoint to Teams to Microsoft 365 Copilot. Subscribe then to see the new updates. First of all, go to Microsoft365.com and search for SharePoint in the search area at the top. Click on the app, the same name. Here we are on the home page of SharePoint Online where we can click on the top left to create a new site. In this case, since I need to create a communication internet portal, I choose the communication site template. I can choose one of the templates that Microsoft provides. Unfortunately, there isn't even one to create an intranet according to our standards and best practices. So I recommend creating a blank site. Use the template called Blank Site. You click on Use Template, then you choose the name for the intranet. In this case, I'm calling it my intranet. If you want a suggestion for giving the right name to your intranet, I've recorded a specific video where I show you a bunch of examples of intranet names and some strategies that we usually recommend to our clients for choosing the best name for your intranet. Once I've done that, I can choose a description for the site and then the address. The address is always important because it allows our colleagues to access the intranet portal. I click on next and then I have to choose the language. The language among the 40 languages that uh, SharePoint Online supports. The language is very important because once I've created the site, I can't change it anymore. Once that's done, I can click on create site. The site creation process takes a few seconds so you really just need to be patient for about 5 to 10 seconds. It's very quick. In this case, I've created a blank site. From here on, I recommend that the first thing you do is choose the corporate theme. So, in the configuration area at the top right, you have the option to modify the appearance of our intranet and select the corporate theme. Now, there are a few themes that are already ready, which Microsoft provides for us. You see that as soon as I change the theme, okay, all the colors, of the main tools in SharePoint Online Change, including all the labels, the footer, the action buttons, and so on. If none of the templates that Microsoft provides work for me, I have the option to choose a basic one and then customize it to include the colors I want. Alternatively, if you want to make even more advanced customizations and choose the detailed colors from the entire color palette that SharePoint Online provides, you can create custom themes. Okay, just like we did in this case, once you've chosen the theme, let's go with this nice pink. You then have the option to configure, still in the appearance modification area, what the header looks like, the settings for the top bar of our intranet. The top bar is very important because it contains the logo, the name of the intranet, and especially the navigation. Here we have four available layouts, one with a very low header, one with a compact header that has the site name and logo on the left and navigation on the right. Then there's a standard header with a slightly larger logo on the left, the title at the top, and navigation at the bottom or an extended header that moves the navigation down to give full space to the header. If I choose this option, I have the possibility to optionally select a background image for our header. This is widely used to create intranets that are nice from a graphic point of view. Alternatively, for any of the other headers we chose earlier, we have the option to select the background color from the color palette we've chosen. Finally, I have the option to choose whether to enable or disable the display of the title or to select the logo for our intranet. These are the steps to configure top part of our intranet. Once that's done, you can go ahead and define the navigation. In general, to modify the navigation of your intranet, you can click on edit by using these features to add new links or groups of links. We can insert content into the navigation. In this case, I'm giving you an example of a content organization that we usually propose to our clients. In this case, I've created two labels, my company and for me and remove default SharePoint links, rename the homepage title to have uppercase navigation elements, then create new links, add a label, sub label, making it a child of the above label. This helps all intranet links, including the homepage, refer back to the parent label, creating a three level cascading navigation. Once that's done, I can always create new links. In this case, I want to add a label again, a sub label and make it a child 
profile of the label above. This helps me ensure that all the links in I add to my intranet. In this case, I always include the link to the home page because I don't have any pages ready yet can refer back to the parent label, allowing for a three level navigation with cascading elements. This is a good practice that we always recommend to our clients. So I can go ahead and add all the navigation elements this way. In this case, I can, for example, add the link to the phone directory and I can also make it a sublink. By clicking save, you can see that my intranet immediately shows a navigation with an expandable menu called a mega menu, which allows us to go up to three levels of navigation. This is how we can create the navigation for our intranet. Once that's done, we need to define a bit of the content for our intranet, but especially the content for the home page. We can define the content of the home page by going into page edit mode and taking advantage of all the content management features that SharePoint Online offers us. SharePoint Online allows us to divide the page into sections and I can create new sections by clicking on these plus signs on the left and then sections are divided into columns. In this case, a default one column section is created, followed by a second section with two columns. However, we also have the option to create sections with three columns or two columns, where one side has a small column on the left and a large one on the right, or a small column on the right and a large one on the left. Each section can then have background color taken from the four colors available in the theme. Or, there's this new feature that allows me to choose some more unique backgrounds offered by Microsoft. Once that's done, within each section I can define the content of my intranet so I can choose to add a web part within the various sections. The web part allows me to display content or features within the SharePoint site and here are all the functionalities that SharePoint provides by default. These web parts can then be extended by adding custom functionalities like all components we have in Internet AI. Internet AI is our solution for quickly creating an intranet portal on SharePoint online with over 45 ready to use components. So they allow us to create an intranet like this. What you see is the intranet that follows all the best practices we recommend to our clients in terms of navigation, providing access to information that explains what the company does, its values, its mission, and all the useful information for everyone. The organizational charts, the list of procedures, access to departmental areas, access to the phone directory to answer the question of who does what in the company, and in addition, areas around the person where I can quickly find all the applications I use most in my day. I find information from human resources about corporate welfare and about my goals. We also have the option to post job openings within the intranet for recruiting colleagues and so on. Additionally, we offer a document area to provide a single point for colleagues to upload documents that are useful for their daily activities. Then we have alerts that are used to convey communications that need to be highlighted more prominently. We have the search feature that allows us to search across various data sources from the phone directory to pages, documents and communications in full text. The sections web parts and columns we saw earlier in the um, default options provided by SharePoint Online have been used to build an intranet with a customized background. This is one of our components that allows us to add an image as the background of a section in SharePoint. Here's the component for displaying highlighted communications. There's a welcome message for the person with quick access to the tools they use most in their daily routine. There's another component for communications. We then added the component that allows colleagues to see all the tools available in the company. We have the calendar, the area for important projects, and the area for quick access to information, this mouse over feature. We also have information taken from company social media, the integration with Viva Engage. So these are all the possibilities we have with SharePoint Online and with ready to use tools like like intranet AI for creating an intranet with SharePoint Online. Clearly, in this video, in just a few minutes, we've only managed to see a part of a real intranet that can be created with SharePoint Online. You should know that with SharePoint Online, we can really create any type of page to present any kind of information that's useful for colleagues uh, in their daily activities. Let me show you another example, the people directory which is basically a list of all the information about the people in the company. We can include organizational charts, you know, the document area. SharePoint really gives us so many, many possibilities. Well, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.